So welcome back to another edition of The Mandalorian. This is going to be episode five for season three of The Mandalorian, guys. So uh, some really good traditions and lore uh, into The Mandalorian ways from last week's episode. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this episode five of The Mandalorian, guys. Let's go ahead and get into this episode. Navarro. Ah. Uh, Garmin Shard. Navarro's under attack. Damn. Ooh. Damn. Ooh. A Y. Where is this? Is this a rebel base? It's Y wings, X wings. Oh, it's a rebel base. Or not a rebel base. Okay, it's a, a First Republic. Or right, um, New Republic base. Yeah, there's a New Republic uh, emblem. Oh, look, look. A Zabrak, a Zabrak, damn, forget, wow. That is sweet, whoa, that is sweet. Same species as uh, Zeb from Star Wars Rebel, that, he looks great, he looks great, that looked great. Oh man, what? Why would he send her there? And why is she getting involved? What's that matter? I can't leave you with experience. It often takes a new perspective before one is able to see the light. You and your sword can even see the light. Hmm. You were captured. No. I was liberated. In any event, thanks to your captain. They won't do anything. Uh, the new republic won't do anything. Oh, right, wait a minute. Is he trying to find Mando? And how would he know where to find Mando? I think he's on that planet. Yep. What? Yeah, they're, they're not going to be happy about this dude just showing up. If they're even there. Are they there? Huh. Blue boy. Really? Oh, R5. I think he's going to join Leia's rebel uh, rebellion, her resistance. It's not your fight. I just came to tell you that your friend is in danger. I thought you should know. No, many of you don't know Grief Karga. And those that do fought against him when you rescued me from his ambush many cycles ago on the streets of Navarro. Since then, he's had a change of heart and has risked his life to save mine as well as the foundling in my charge. 
I stand before you to petition an intervention. To help rescue Navarro before it's too late. Reed Carga is now a high magistrate and has offered me a tract of land on this independent world. Perhaps it is time for us to live in a life once again on a planet where we are welcome so our culture may flourish and our children may feel what it is to play in the sunlight. That's a deep petition right there. In order to hold the floor, you got to hold the hammer. Cool. Does anyone else wish to speak? I do. Uh-oh. Pause. Uh-oh. I fought against Grief Carga and his hunters. I saw my brothers and sisters fall in the hands of the Imperial butchers that hunted us in the sewers. Why should we lay our lives down yet again? We are Mandalorians. I have had my disagreements with this man, but he risked his life to save my life. I thought he was going to speak up. And both the clan creeds did not give up on my child's life. This is the way. This is the way. It's about to go this out. This is the way. Let's go do this. Um, let's do it. Ooh, wow, they just, yeah, he, he destroyed it. Wow, look at Navarro. Damn. Running the monkeys out. I love all the aliens in this. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks for your help, Mando. I decided to take you up on your offer for a tract of land. Be careful, my friend. They've got you outnumbered ten to one. Hmm. Ooh. I like those odds. This is cool. This is cool. Look at the gauntlet. Of course, we did see this from the trailer. First team away. Really militarized. I loved it. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Mmm. See the Mandos in, in action. This is cool. This is cool. We see the Mandalorians, how they operate. Uh-oh. Huh. <laughs> he straight snitched. Uh oh, watch out, watch your back. Damn, they got flanked. I hope, hope uh, a lot of them don't really have uh, best guard though. They are boxed in. Damn, come on. Come on, somebody's gotta show up. Oh, pause. Oh, nice. Oh, damn. And it said, whoa, wow. You gotta watch out. Damn. Pause took a hit. Okay, well, you gotta get out of there now, babe. And where's Dan? Where's Dan? That's right. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's over, fellas. Whoa. Ah. 
Mm. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> this dude is riding on the ship. That was a good shot. Alright, oh yeah, the ship's going down. Damn. Damn. Uh, uh, the same noise when uh, the uh, Vader ship went into the Death Star. That same noise. Uh. What? Why is he asking her to remove her helmet? Uh. We must walk the way together. Oh, Mandalorian. She's going to take her helmet off. The armor is going to take her helmet off. She's giving Bo the nod to for the leadership. Okadon Three is going off to bring other Mandalorians and exiles to us, so that we may join together once again. He shows her face. Okatan walks both worlds. He can bring all tribes. Uh oh. They're gonna retake Mandalore. Oh, well, okay. I'm catching back up with my man. Moth. Is this Moth? I, I got a feeling Moth is showing up. This looks like a shuttle. Yeah, it's a, it's a damaged shuttle. I don't know. It looks like an Imperial shuttle. It's a New Republic prison transport. It's a New Republic prison transport. Moth escaped. What is it? It's a fragment of Beskar alloy. Are you saying that Moth Gideon was taken by Mandalorian? Oh. Hmm, that's an interesting development. Really interesting development. All right, so uh, really, really interesting uh, development at the end of that episode. Uh, of course, we knew. Uh, Moff Gideon was going to uh, come back at some point. Um, and of course, we did in a previous episode, we heard rumors uh, that he escaped. Well, we know uh, now that those rumors are true. However, what we did not know is that it uh, possibly could be Mandalorians that freed him. Remember, Bo Katan's group of Mandalorians are now mercenaries. They probably went and freed Moff Gideon. 
Uh, so that most definitely is an interesting uh, development there uh, in that uh, last scene of the episode. Uh, but for the episode itself, it was a really, really good episode. Obviously, uh, in the trailers, we knew that at some point Navarro was going to be taken over by the pirates. So obviously, we saw uh, Gon Shard uh, commence his attack on Navarro, uh, driving the town uh, people out uh, into uh, basically the wastelands, it looks like. Karga having to uh, actually call on the New Republic uh, for assistance. And then, of course, we have our um, resistance uh, pilot. And uh, Reef Karga calls in a favor to the New Republic and calls on uh, Katie M. O'Brien uh, for assistance. Uh, he then goes to the New Republic for assistance. They uh, basically refuse to help. Interesting because at this point, uh, Mon Mothma is the chancellor. Uh, she decided to decommission 90% of their military. And uh, this obviously made the New Republic weak. And this is just a very good example of that, uh, this attack on Navarro by simple pirates. Captain O'Brien uh, decides to uh, seek out uh, the Mandalorians, uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, so it looks like uh, R five served uh, in the served. in the rebellion and uh, was uh, and, and obviously was a friend to Captain O'Brien. So uh, really, really interesting uh, information right there as well. Uh, but then uh, he does seek out the Mandalorians. He does let Din Djarin know that Grief Karga is in danger and Navarro's under attack. Then, uh, then asks the rest of the Mandalorians for their assistance. Uh, offering them for a, a place to live out in the open where they're accepted on Navarro. Uh, he remembers that he was offered that piece of land. Uh, now he's looking to take up that uh, offer from Reef Karga and uh, set up shop uh, openly uh, on Navarro. Um, and he offers this to uh, the rest of the Mandalorians. Uh, and then we have Paz Vizla who stands up uh, seemingly uh, going against what uh, Din is asking them to do, but then he definitely uh, backs Din up uh, and also includes Bo-Katan as well. But he backs Din up and uh, they decide that they're going to go help out Navarro. Uh, so they board uh, the gauntlet in a very military style, uh, getting ready to land down on Navarro. And we see an excellent, uh, not only air uh, battle, but we also get uh, some really, really good ground battle action as well on Navarro. Uh, with the Mandalorians taking the pirates out uh, and uh, basically destroying Lauren Shard's ship, uh, crashing it to the ground. However, one of the pirates does escape. I forget that pirate's name, but he does escape and we'll probably see him again. Uh, and he probably will be a monkey wrench uh, in this whole thing. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but that's really, really interesting. Uh, and then uh, we get a really interesting moment with the armorer and Bo-Katan. Uh, where uh, the armor armor requests uh, Bo-Katan's presence. Uh, they go down to the old sewers where uh, the Mandalorians once uh, rest their heads. And uh, we're in front of the original uh, area where she would uh, construct the uh, Beskar armor into armor. And uh, she basically gives Bo-Katan the nod to become the new leader of the Mandalorians and uh, basically gives her blessing to uh, seek out the uh, mythosaur and to bring back as many Mandalorians as she can back to the COVID, uh, even asking her to remove her helmet. Um, so um, a really, really interesting aspect. And we could uh, actually see uh, this helmet rule uh, be done away with because now the way the armor explains it is that Bo-Katan uh, walks both worlds uh, the, the world of the COVID uh, uh, convict, uh, as well as uh, the world that she came from uh, with the other Mandalorian. So it's really going to be interesting to see uh, how that all unfolds and also to see if uh, Din Djarin is going to join her on her on her new quest to uh, bring those other Mandalorians back into the fold. Now, the other interesting aspect to this episode is what we saw uh, there at the end uh, comes across this uh, Landa shuttle. Uh, the, uh, and it's a, a New Republic lander shuttle. So uh, again, we see a lot of the uh, Imperial ships uh, being reused uh, by the uh, New Republic. Uh, and then obviously this being a, a prison transport ship uh, and uh, one that Moff Gideon was uh, aboard. And for some reason, and what's really interesting is that um, this attack has commenced and Moff Gideon has escaped and we're not even seeing 
the New Republic even being alarmed by it. Uh, this lone uh, pilot has to come across the ship and discover that Moff Gideon has escaped. Uh, so uh, really interesting how lax the uh, New Republic is, uh, how, how much they've let their guard down. It's almost comical uh, how much uh, the New Republic has left their guard down. And what's even more surprising behind that, or maybe not so as uh, surprising uh, from what we saw in Andor, um, but with Mon Mothma being the chancellor, uh, we know she's opposed to any type of military action. We did we saw that reflected in Andor uh, with her um, conversation with Luthen uh, in the Andor series. If you have not saw that uh, series, you should check it out because there are uh, some very telling things in that particular series that do apply here uh, as we venture into uh, the New Republic era and uh, this uh, regime of the New Republic led by Mon Mothma um, and her very soft uh, policies, unfortunately. A really, really good episode. I did enjoy this episode a lot. It did give us a, a, a whole lot of action, uh, also uh, fed us into the overall plot of this uh, season. Uh, we now know officially that Moff Gideon has escaped. We knew, but what we did not know is how and who let him out. Uh, which is the uh, mercenary Mandalorians who are uh, obviously were hired to free uh, Moff Gideon. Uh, another interesting aspect uh, of this episode, two things that I forgot to talk about, uh, is the New Republic uh, base, which was really cool, and all of the Y wings that we saw there, uh, really, really uh, interesting. And then, of course, there was a couple of X wings out there as well. So I did enjoy that uh, scenery as well. Our girl Alana Kane uh, was back in this episode. Uh, basically giving her two cents on the Outer Rim and Navarro and what it would take to uh, try to secure uh, such a world uh, such as that. Uh, basically siding with the New Republic uh, not to send reinforcements out there. Um, but it, obviously what we know from the New Republic again is that they do not have those resources uh, to protect planets like Navarro. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why uh, this that gov that uh, government failed. So a really really good episode. I did enjoy the episode a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and score this episode. I'm gonna give this episode an eight point five out of ten. A really good episode. Did enjoy the action a lot. Uh, we got a little bit of political intrigue. Uh, also found out what happened with Moff Gideon. Uh, I thought all of the aliens uh, in this particular episode were really really good looking, especially the uh, the same species that Zeb Aurelius. Uh, is in the uh, Star Wars Rebel series, uh, but we see this particular uh, creature in live action, which is really, really cool and very interesting. And also what that tells us is that for the Ahsoka series, uh, we have a good chance of seeing Zeb Aurelius uh, if they're able to uh, pull that off as, as well as they did right here. Uh, I think that would work for the Ahsoka series and, and to see Zeb again uh, in live action uh, would be very exciting. So uh, that just puts the uh, excitement for the Ahsoka series just that much more uh, on uh, uh, on top. So uh, really, really good stuff in this episode. I did enjoy it a lot, and that's why I scored it 8.5 out of 10, guys. But please do let me know what your thoughts are in regards to this episode. Uh, did you enjoy this episode? And also, uh, are you enjoying The Mandalorian season so far? I basically have been enjoying the season so far. I know a lot of fans are trying to figure out, well, where is this all going? Where is this all leading to? Uh, I think this is leading up to uh, a, a lot. Uh, of course, we know Moff Gideon is out, uh, so the remnants of the Empire are still out there. Um, we also know Bo-Katan uh, is going to be going out to get uh, more of her recruits who are uh, or may be responsible for freeing Moff Gideon. Uh, so that could also be an interesting aspect as well. Uh, if Moff Gideon has uh, hired these Mandalorians to protect him, um, Bo-Katan is going to have a real hard time recruiting these uh, Mandalorians back into the uh, uh, COVID, especially if they found out that she's uh, joined this, um, this cult, uh, as she explained it when she first uh, met Din Djarin. Please do let me know what your thoughts are. Put those comments down below. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And of course, guys, from the Father to the Son to the Obi-Wan Force Ghost, may the Force be with you always.